Okay. Um, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And uh, so I'm going to present something on the Department of Earth Observation Science and what we do. Then I would specifically look at uh, what we do regarding spatial statistics and geohealth. Uh, the focus has been on geohealth because it's one of the new domains uh, in the department and of course in the faculty of ITC and that of the entire university. And therefore it will require a major focus. So um, our department uh, seems to be the core of Earth Observation Science. We look at both the physics, physics aspect of it, as well as the development of methods to process uh, Earth Observation data. Now our um, developments are also linked in achieving the sustainable development goals. As um, during the introduction, uh, he mentioned the high-tech human touch. Whatever we do should also have some human touch, and that is the societal relevance. And if we are able to associate ourselves with achieving the sustainable development goals, I deem it very much fit. So the department has three main uh, groups. We have the spatial statistics and image analysis, and we have geoinformation extraction and sensor systems, as well as geohealth, which is quite new in the university, and we have very able and amiable three professors running the department. Our keywords are spatial statistics, photogrammetry, data quality, topographic mapping, airborne and mobile laser scanning, image analysis. These are what I found on our website. But I've done my best to add some aspects of geohealth to it because it needs to be there. So maybe we have to update our, our website in the near future. So spatial statistics, what do we do? We always intend to explore, model, predict, geographically referenced data. We use a lot of statistics and a lot of simulations to achieve our objectives. Now, spatial data comes in different forms. When you want to look at the representation, then you are talking about points, lines, and polygons, which are the common uh, geographic feature representations. But we are much interested in the processes. So we can think of geostatistical process, point pattern process, or lattice processes. The methods will vary depending on the kind of process that you intend to deal with. And geohealth, the new frontier, which also looks at exploring, modeling, and predicting geographically referenced health data. So the key word here is health data. Now, in GeoHealth, we try to integrate different kinds of data, environmental data, like uh, uh, sociodemographic data from different sources together. Now, to be able to achieve this integration, that is where spatial statistics comes in. And therefore, spatial statistics is seen as a hub of geohealth. Geohealth, really, in my opinion, cannot stand with, without uh, spatial statistics. So, uh, people from the group of spatial statistics also, some way, somehow, belong to the group of geohealth. And that aside, we also need people from the environment who deal with the environment. So geohealth now in the faculty is trying to consolidate 
all researchers and teams, uh, researchers who belong to different teams in the faculty together. So we don't only have people from the EOS department, but rather we have people from the GIP, water resources and the like, that we team up to integrate our different um, uh, objectives and our different resources to form the GeoHealth. Now, there are a lot of questions in terms of research that GeoHealth seeks to answer. We can answer why diseases occur and why they occur at specific locations and how they occur and when they would occur. And of course, we can also look at the relevant environmental and socio-demographic factors that can lead to the occurrence of disease. But then to achieve this objective, we have to do a lot of computations. And that is where um, sustainable software development uh, comes in. We have to do a lot of computations. Uh, we cannot do everything manually. So we have to automate our activities. We have been relying on different softwares. Python, it has already been mentioned, but since the start of the program, I haven't heard the mention of R, which is very pop popular in this building. We also use MATLAB, Java, C++. In our latest survey, in our department, we realize that 62.5% uh, are using Python. And of course, the users overlap. And we have 50% of them using uh, R software. Quite a few are using MATLAB. And of course, occasionally, and some are using C++, Java, and Visual Basic. Now, in GeoHelt, what are we using? Because this is the main focus of my discussion. There are a number of standalone softwares which exist that we use. Joda, I think uh, there are users of Joda apart from uh, our department. Uh, there are other users in, in, in the faculty. Uh, we also use uh, Sascan for cluster analysis because it is one of the vital aspects of GeoHealth, uh, trying to look at the occurrences of diseases, whether they cluster or not. Uh, so we use an already developed software. Joda is free. Okay, Joda is free. Saskan is also free to use. But then we cannot always rely on existing software, so we have to develop our own. And that is where R comes in. The advantage is that R is free and it has a lot of support uh, in terms of development from the comprehensive R archive network so we can uh, continue to use R because of its sustainability. Okay, now let's look at the sustainability. What are we as a department doing also to aid software sustainability. We are looking at, we are trying to assist both in terms of the hardware and also the software. And because of that, our current investment when it comes to computation, uh, we, we rely on placing our computers in the data center, the UT, so then we don't have to invest in the physical space again and also the management of the computers again. Now when it comes to the soft uh, component of sustainability, uh, for some time back, we had a software engineer whose uh, main uh, activity was to optimize the, the codes and the scripts that we, we, we write to ensure a faster processing. Uh, and what we also uh, advise our people to optimize the codes that they write, especially we deal with a lot of metrics operations. So uh, how do we find the inverse of a metric? There are different methods. So we try to advise our people to optimize these. Now, as I've, as I've already said, R is free. R Studio enhances the operations of using R, especially uh, for, for students. Now, how does the future hold? Are we there yet? 
because big data is coming. Can our current activities regarding our software help us achieve uh, these goals? It's a question we need to discuss afterwards, but I see this as a setback, and every setback is an opportunity for a comeback. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Frank, for your presentation. Uh, and a very valid question also at, at the end. So any, any questions from the audience of Frank's presentation? Yes, Frank Carlos. You mentioned the participation of a software engineer in the department. So two questions. Um, do you still have it? And the second question is, how did that idea came by in your department? Because I, I've been part of a number of departments, and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's extremely <laughs> difficult. So. First question, do we still have it? No, because it was for a period and the funding exhausted, so we don't have that position. And uh, the second one relates to... Um, uh, the, the general opinion of the department, but I think you already answered that, because yeah. if it was part of a project, yeah, it, it, was it doesn't part necessarily of a mean that the department as a department considers the um, the role of a software engineer, um, you know, a, a, a necessary position, which I think it, I'm biased, but I think is a it's not the way to go. Um, but yeah, so that's I think you already answered that question. So yeah, thanks thank for you. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Actually, there are some discussions about it at ITC, but maybe we can talk about it later on.